All right, good afternoon and welcome to the council. I'm your host, Charlie Pacello. We are on the international camera right now and just waiting for the other camera to come online. We've got a great show for you today. It's going to be so much fun. I'm so glad you're here tuning in. You are listening on KUHSDenver.com. That's KUHSDenver.com, broadcasting some of the best shows all around the world uh, with music and great shows and interviews. All for you, uh, all you listeners out there, and we're just waiting one more time, just a couple more minutes before this other camera comes on. And uh, anyway, we are sponsored by Remax Alliance. Remax Alliance. Uh, if you need a home in Colorado, please go to www.homesincolorado.com. That's homesincolorado.com. Uh, yeah, I know them personally. These guys are some of the best uh, people around. If you want to buy or sell a home, they are the people to go to. They are my dear friends. And, uh, you know, I know them personally. I've known them for a very, very long time. Uh, go to Remax Alliance and you will find uh, some of the best people to help you buy or sell a home in Colorado. Again, that's homesincolorado.com. Uh, homesincolorado.com. Uh, if you are interested in any kind of counseling or services, uh, please go to my website at www.charliepacello.com. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-P-A-C-E-L-L-O. And uh, we're also um, we're just going to start doing on the program where you can call in with questions or uh, right now, just go to my website. If you have a question that you want answered, uh, write it down and I will answer it for you on the next show. And uh, we'll start doing that uh, here shortly in the next few shows. We've got some great shows lined up for you. Today, we have, uh, we're going to be talking about men and women, uh, men and women in relationships. It's a big issue. We need to be able to discuss it. Uh, I've got an amazing guest here who's going to be helping us to discuss and dive in deeper to that. But really, do men and women have differences. I mean, are there differences between them? I mean, we, we, we live in a culture and a society where some of those uh, differences are, are very obvious, sometimes they're not. Uh, I believe in all my heart that uh, women should have equality in everything, in being in paid, and in, in, uh, in in where they're working, and being uh, achieving the highest levels of office. I believe in all that. I think, you know, t touching into and tapping into that divine feminine, that feminine that's uh, been kind of repressed for so long. It's been repressed and kept down for so long that uh, it's time for that to, to rise up and come to a new level and for all of us to be able to balance that out. But are men and women different? And it seems like we've got this camera coming on. I hope it's coming on. Uh, we'll see here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's look at some of the evidence that's out there. And these are some general findings, uh, generalizations between men and women that are that are obvious. And uh, you know we uh, we have to understand our own differences, and so that we can help to make our relationship stronger and better, and uh, that we can get along. Some of the physiological differences that are out there: uh, girls develop the right side of their brain faster than boys, which leads to talking, vocabulary, pronunciation reading earlier and better memory and this all this information <clears throat> excuse me comes from the relationship institute boys develop the left side of their brain faster which is their visual their spatial logical skills perceptual skills the better at math problem solving building and figuring out puzzles girls are more interested in toys with faces than boys are they play with stuffed animals and dolls a lot more Boys are drawn to blocks or anything that can be manipulated. And women use both hemispheres of their brain. Their corpus callosum is a lot thicker in a, in a woman than it is in a man, which plays a big significant part in relationships because uh, women uh, can think with both hemispheres, whereas men are either thinking and feeling. <laughs> so we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Uh, social inf influences. There are studies of infants um, with uh, parents watching them, and both men and women speak louder to boys than girl infants. They are softer and express more cooing with girls. 
And boys are rarely told that they're sweet or pretty. They're mostly told that they're, you know, hey, buddy, or hey, big guy, something like that. Now, boys handle more are handled more physically and robustly than girls. They're bounced around more. Girls are caressed and stroked more than boys. And up to age two, mothers tend to talk and look at their daughters significantly more than they do with their sons. And they make a lot more eye contact with their daughters as well. Mothers show a wider range of emotion uh, with their girls than with boys. And fathers tend to use command terms with boys more than girls. And uh, so these are just some of these early developmental things. And as it, these differences you know, continue as boys and girls develop into uh, their teenage years. Some interesting things of their differences. Nursery rhymes, books, and cartoons perpetuate stereotypes which often promote damsel in distress, frumpy housewife, uh, helpless senior citizen, uh, sexy heroine, and, and swooning cheerleader. And girls use more terms of endearment than boys. Boys get away with more aggressive antisocial behavior in school and, ho and in home than girls do. And girls who act as tomboys are accepted. Boys who act like girls are severely reprimanded. You know, don't you cry. Don't you, don't you be a sissy. Okay, and these other things that are included. Girls tend to talk about other people. And that helps them to, you know, these secrets in order to bond for friendships and school and wish lists. And boys tend to talk about things and activities. What they're doing and, you know, who's best at the activity. And in their teenage years, girls talk about boys, their school, their clothes, and their weight. And teenage boys talk about sports, mechanics, and function of things. At age 12 to 18, the biggest event for girls is having a boyfriend. At age 12 to 18, boys are equally interested in the following, sex, cars, and sports. And this carries into adulthood when women want to talk more about relationships and people and diets and clothing and physical appearance. Whereas men, we want to talk about sports and work, money, cars, news, politics, the mechanics of things. And so this influences our values and what, and what we uh, attribute to our self-esteem. And for men, a man's sense of self is defined by his ability to achieve results through success and accomplishment and achieve those goals. And he proves his competence and feel good about himself. To feel good about himself, men must achieve goals by themselves. And for men, doing things by themselves is a symbol of efficiency, power, and competence. And in general, men are more interested in objects and things rather than people and feelings. Men rarely talk about their feelings, and it's only when they're seeking expert advice do they do that. So a men's self-esteem is usually career, more career-related, and they feel devastated by failures and financial setbacks. They tend to obsess about money a lot more than women. And asking for information, they consider that to be, you know, a failure on some level. Whereas women, women value love, communication, beauty, and relationships. A woman's sense of self is defined through their feelings and the quality of their relationships. They spend a lot more time nurturing and supporting and helping one another. And they experience this fulfillment through sharing and relating. Personal expression in clothes and feelings is very important. Communication is very important. And talking, sharing, and relating is how a woman feels good about herself. And for a woman, offering help is not, or is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. It's a sign of caring and giving to give support. Men who are when men are preoccupied with work or money, women interpret that as a rejection. Some other differences. Men are more logical, analytical, rational. Women are more intuitive, holistic, creative, and integrative. Men have a much more difficult time relating to their feelings and may feel threatened by the expression of feelings in their presence. And this may cause them to overreact or withdraw or attempt to control their situation through a display of any kind of control or power. And this is really interesting. Men are actually more vulnerable and dependent on relationships than women are and are more devastated by the ending uh, since they have fewer friends and sources of emotional support. 
And men are more at ease with their angry feelings than women are. Women are in touch with a much wider range of feelings than men. And that intensity of those feelings is usually much greater for women than men. And as a result, many men perceive that women's feelings appear to change too quickly. And may, they find, find this irrational and difficult to understand. Um, women tend to be more sensitive to sounds and smells than men are. And women, as such, tend to place a greater emphasis on the atmosphere. This uh, leads to conflicts, right? And basic differences between men and women. And here's just a few of them. The most frequent complaint men have about women is that women are always trying to change them. The most frequent complaint women have about men is that men don't listen. <laughs> women want empathy. Men usually offer solutions. And when a woman tries to change or improve or correct or give advice to a man, men hear that they're being told that they're not competent or don't know how to do something or that they can't do something on their own. Men often feel responsible or to blame for women's problems. And men always assume women want advice and solutions to problems and that that is the best way to be helpful and to show love. Women often just want someone to sincerely listen to them. Housework. This is really interesting. And I, and I can definitely relate to this. Men avoid it and try to get others to do it at all costs. Uh, they feel demeaned by doing it. As for women, cleanliness of a house is a manifestation of a warm and homey nest. And so men and women have different perceptions of cleanliness and dirt. It, uh, just look at a, at a single man's house, and you'll, and you'll, you'll see the difference, right? Um, men often try to change a woman's mood when she's upset by offering solutions to her problems, which she interprets as discounting and invalidating her feelings. And when women are upset, it's not the time to offer solutions. That may be the appropriate, there may be an appropriate time in the future for that when she calms down. A man appreciates advice and criticism when it is requested. Men want to make improvements when they feel they are being approached as a solution to a problem rather than the problem itself. And men have a great need for status and independence, which is an emphasis on the separateness and, and different. And women have a need for intimacy and connection. And that's an emphasis on closeness and same. Women need to receive caring, understanding, respect, devotion, validation, and reassurance. Women are most motivated at their core, I believe, when they feel special and that their feelings are cherished. Men need to receive trust, acceptance, appreciation, admiration, approval, and encouragement. And men are most motivated at their core when their thoughts are respected and when they feel needed. A man's deepest fear is that he is not good enough or not competent enough, though he may never express this. So there's obviously, we do have some differences. And so how do we navigate through this time? Well, today on the council, you, we are blessed to have, uh, we're going to dive deeper into the nature of men and women and relationships and how to navigate through these times uh, for men in this climate. And my very special guest is Jenny Adams. And she is a relationship and sex coach for men to understand women. And she has been helping men transform into their higher caliber versions of themselves. She trusts that every man is capable of being masculine without being an ass. That they can stand in their own power and make women happy. So welcome, Jenny. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a joy to be here. <laughs> well, uh, could you just tell the audience here, you know, just a little bit about uh, your background and how you came to this work and, you know, why why did you choose it? Why did it, why did it come? Absolutely. Um, where do I start? So <laughs> growing up, I was always a tomboy. I was always into sports. I was a leader in high school on student council. I went to college and became a mechanical engineer in the manufacturing field and was one of six women to graduate in a class of 66 people, so 10% female. And I had to be very masculine to survive there and including in my career. And my last corporate job, I was 
a plant manager for a chemical plant, mm -hmm. wearing steel-toed boots wow. and hard hats. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, wow. And still, even being the plant manager, I only had three women that worked for me. They didn't oh. even have a women's restroom, um, locker room when I got there. Wow. I had to build one. You did? Mm -hmm. You had to build one on your own? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So um, during that time, right before I was the plant manager, I went to this school called the School of Womanly Arts mm -hmm. in New York City. And it was by far better than any of my um, previous schooling, whether it be growing up or my two college degrees, mm -hmm. by far the best schooling I've ever had as a woman. And it allowed me to give myself permission to be feminine, yeah. which this world does not give women permission to do unless you're in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. So Beyonce is pretty feminine. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's been, she has been able to make it, that, you know, and to, yes. to hold on to her feminine. And if she wasn't, if yeah. she was masculine, she would not be where she is. Mm -hmm. But when women are given permission to be feminine, they inspire the world. Yeah. And so when I began giving myself permission to be feminine, men started asking me to coach them. I would meet men on the airplane and just have a conversation for the hour we were on the plane. And they're like, can you please be my life coach? <laughs> <laughs> um, part of it is because I own my own sexuality, my sensuality, my femininity. Um, I let them be men mm -hmm. when they say, oh, you're telling, you're talking about sex. I kind of want to sleep with you. And I'm oh, like, wow. you know what? You're a man. That feeling's okay. It's not going to happen. Right. But it's okay to be a man. Do you think it's, uh, it's such an important, it is okay to be a man, but it's also so important for a woman to be a woman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times men don't know how to allow a woman to be a woman, to be in her femininity. And so much has changed in the culture that, uh, you know, men are trying to figure these things out and they're not always doing well in being able to do it because... You know, we have to honor, we have to respect, we have to understand that a woman has uh, a soul and a heart and feelings and they're not just property and they're not just objects of attention and all that. And when we treat women in those ways, we're, 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 we're diminishing them and we're diminishing ourselves by doing that. And learning how to be able to raise that femininity up and exactly. allow them to be, uh, to be a woman. Yeah, your points around being a whole woman, mm -hmm. W-H-O-L-E. Most women in this world feel like a whole, H-O-L-E. Oh. And when we feel like a whole, it is not pretty. Mm -hmm. And we go numb and we pull inside ourselves and we're empty. Mm -hmm. If you treat us as a whole, we're going to be a whole, which is empty. Mm -hmm. And when you treat us as a whole, W-H-O-L-E, we fill up and we radiate. And Terry Crews uh, was recently uh, doing some speech on the internet, and he was talking about a lot of men don't see women as human. Mm -hmm. And again, it's that whole versus the whole. Do you think that's upbringing? Do you think that's a cultural it's a thing? It's a cultural, we... societal uh, system yeah. that's broken. And it's been broken for a long time. Yes. You know, it's been broken. You, and you see this thing in families and working with, you know, I work with a lot of uh, broken families that are going through divorce, and you see these things where you know people weren't uh, respected, or they, you know there was all these power and control things that were going on, and uh, there was no reverence for the, the feminine, and there was no yeah. reverence, you know, for the masculine and, and as well. In so. reality, women don't even know what it means to be feminine. Yeah. No one ever taught us either. Yeah. So men don't know, women don't know, wow. and that's what I teach because that's the piece that's missing. So how do you teach men? I mean, men, obviously, we uh, we seem to need a lot more help when it comes to relationships. Uh, you know, we just do. And what do you help them to, to you know, because we had we had the Me Too um, movement and it continues. And, that, and, then, and that's an absolute abomination, what those men were doing to those women. And it's, uh, you know, we have to, as men, collectively have to say enough is enough and no more on those things. Absolutely. So we have to learn new skills. We have to learn new ways of, of behaving and, inter and mm -hmm. interacting with one another. How do you help men to do that? So the first point I want to make is that this Me Too piece that's going on and, and other 
things that are happening in our culture. The water is boiling. Mm -hmm. The masculine is a pot holding that water that's boiling. Mm -hmm. And if you can make yourself into a teapot and let that steam make music with the feminine mm -hmm. and see the beauty in her anger, it'll take us to the next level where we can actually start putting solutions in place. But the water has to boil to be able to make that music together. Oh. And women don't want men to battle us. Even though it feels like women are battling men right now, we don't want them to battle us. It's just pent up resentment and anger from centuries and millennia um, that women have that they're releasing right now. And what we want, instead of being battled against, is we want to be fought for. It's uh, being fought for is a lot different than, than fighting against someone. And, you know, and, I, and I've certainly had that, uh, you know, as relationships that I've had, and, you know, and, and men can see that as confrontational, you know, that it's in our net, and we see that as a threat to ourselves or something wrong with us when, and not learning how to be able to contain that and not get overly charged by it because it happens and you know I, I that's one of the things I teach men is how to handle women's emotions yeah. first of all humans are emotional it's not just women it's men too you've just been taught to suppress them by the societal structures right. and shamed around emotion that's where women and men connect is in the heart the genitals, you connect there too in a different way, but you can't be all heart and you can't be all genitalia. No, you, can't. you have to be a mixture of the two because the heart is where you connect mm -hmm. with the love piece and the genitals are where you connect with the sexuality and eroticism. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's when those two are connected together. Yes. That's where it gets to be something that transcends. I mean, mm -hmm. you're moving into places there in a relationship. You're going diving deeper and deeper when you have that. Right. But if you're just motivated by your genitalia, <laughs> you become an ass. You become an ass. <laughs> That's it. You're just the And an if ass. you're only motivated by your heart and you're not listening to your genitalia, both men and women becomes toxic. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So how do we, you know, you're on your website, Jenna, you describe, you know, you're being this conduit for men, you're helping them to explore these things. And, you know, in your exploration of your own femininity and your own sensuality and sexuality, how did that help you to develop this program? Sure. For men <laughs> and to, and to tap into that true, authentic, masculine power in an authentic way, not being an ass, not just being led by your genitalia, mm -hmm. but connecting your hearts all the way through uh, and to be able to also make women happy. Exactly. So... It's a bigger than we can go into just on this show, <laughs> but um, I'm trying to think where I was going to start with your question. The women need men to follow through with what they're doing. So one of the thing, one of the analogies that I like to use with men mm -hmm. is the lighthouse. So the woman is the ocean and the weather and we're stormy or we might be smooth and clear and beautiful and the sun sets and it's we're gorgeous <laughs> and we inspire and the masculine is the lighthouse and the water when it's stormy is going to slam up against that lighthouse and when that lighthouse can stand in the storm we trust you oh. when you crumble we can't trust you so then we have to become masculine and build that part in ourselves, mm. which defeats the whole purpose. So when men can be that masculine shelter, or the beacon of light to pull us in, mm -hmm. we'll give you the electricity for your light mm. by the storms and our beauty and the calm seas and just this vastness that we are. If you can give us the stability and the beacon of safety to come into. It's so important. To have that sense of stability and security, uh -huh. that you can withstand those storms, and there are going to be storms, uh, you know, and uh, and they're just it just is. Um, the light hero is envisioning riding a roller coaster, because every um, relationship there's ups and downs. Yeah. The most fun you have on the roller coaster is when it's going down super steep, which in a relationship feels scary, but if you just put your arms in there. Mm -hmm. It becomes thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> that looks fantastic. Well, you know, and it's uh, and for a lot of men, it's because the way we're wired in our brain, it can make it so difficult for us to be able to withstand those all those emotions because, you know, like I mentioned earlier in the program, our corpus callosum is smaller than it is in a, in a, in a female brain. It's just the way we evolved and evolution, and so. We're not able to think and feel at the same time. We're not able to recognize and say, oh my gosh, she is, you know, in her feeling emotion and what she needs from me is to withstand this storm. If I just coming back from work and I've been in my thinking mode and my logical mind and all that, stuff, I can't get that. I, it's like, a, and so there really needs to be some kind of uh, patience, I guess, on, on both parts to be able to learn how to handle that. Yeah, yeah there is definitely patience. So women have a brain that's like spaghetti. Uh -huh. Everything is connected for us. So it's also why we're good multitaskers and mm -hmm. we can think and do 50 things at one time. And we can listen for the child crying in the next room while we're making dinner and while we're watching TV and <laughs> <laughs> reading a book all at the same time. Um, so our spaghetti brain connects everything together, which is why it's important to link everything you do for a woman as one thing. So inside the bedroom, outside the bedroom, work, it's all related to her. Oh. It's all the same thing. And for men, you have a waffle brain. Mm -hmm. You have little <laughs> compartments. <laughs> we got waffle brain, guys. I'm telling you, we got waffle brains. <laughs> you have little compartments that you focus in, <clears throat> yep. and you can only be in one compartment at a time. And women need to understand that about men. You have to crawl over a wall to get to the other side. <laughs> and it takes a few minutes. And sometimes it feels like you're not listening to us. But if we just know that you just have to get out of that compartment, right. then we know it's not us. Got it. And women really need to be feel like they're being heard. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that's where that nagging thing comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Men in. call it nagging because we're, we're, you want to stay in your compartment and we want you in a different compartment yeah. and we don't feel heard. Right. And so we keep repeating ourselves. So it's important for us to feel heard. Even if you just say, you know, give me 10 minutes to finish this up and then I can focus on you. Uh -huh. Just call it out. Your spaghetti brain and your waffle brain, just say it. Well, and that makes sense because, you know, certainly uh, when, you're, when you're in that compartment and you're thinking about something, you're... As a man, you're not there for, you know, to be available to, uh, to a woman, being able to really listen to her. And so it's having those kinds of little tools that you can say, you know, let me, I'll be with you in just 10 minutes. Or, right. You know, let me settle down and give, you know, let me unwind for just a couple minutes and then I can mm -hmm. be there for you. I mean, even my son, who's nine, mm -hmm. he just told me the other day, I stopped listening, Mom. I'm good. <laughs> and I was done. I just knew that he moved to a different compartment. And mm -hmm. it was fine for both of us because he said it out loud. Yeah. And that's a communication uh -huh. thing, right? That's being, and you know, the communication. If a nine-year-old can do it, we can do it. can do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a quick uh, radio announcement. We are broadcasting live from KUHSDenver.com. That's KUHSDenver.com. You are listening to the council uh, and my uh, fantastic conversation uh, with uh, Jenny Adams. She's a relationship Coach, uh, relationship and sex coach for men to help them understand women better. Um, you know, Jenny, I believe that truly men really feel loved when their thoughts are respected, when they feel that they're appreciated for what they do and that uh, they're needed. And I feel, feel that women feel loved when their feelings are cherished, when they feel safe and adored and special. And heard and seen and a longer list than that. And a longer list than that. <laughs> it's a lot longer list, guys. I try to keep it condensed to the essence. Yeah. But, that's but the men are more, really, it's more simple. Yeah. The masculine is a more simple creature and the feminine is a more complex creature. Yeah. We are. We're very simple. That's true. And that's why men love women. They love the mystery. They, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, so, you know, but we, there's a lot of uh, dynamics and intimate relations with, which can create that conflict and that distrust, mm -hmm. and those feelings of being misunderstood or, or abandonment or dysfunction or those things. What can men <clears throat> and women do to help bridge that gap um, on these very subtle expressions of love that are felt by the opposite sex? 
It's a long list, but <laughs> <laughs> you can condense it. I'll give you a few. Big, I'll give you a few of them. So, women need to allow themselves to receive from men. Mm -hmm. We have been taught that it's not okay to have desires and not okay to receive, and we have to take care of everyone else. Mm -hmm. But that's being in our masculine. Mm -hmm. And society structures taught us all that. Mm -hmm still teach us that. And when we're in our masculine, men can't be masculine. And it emasculates men. And I call it masculates women. <laughs> <laughs> There's no word of defeminate, defeminist. Defeminist, you can't be feminist. Uh, you can't be feminist or demasculate. <laughs> emasculate, defeminate. Yeah, there isn't a term. It's all about the man. Right. And that's how the structural systems are set up, is that it's all masculine. And that's what's rewarded. Mm -hmm. even for women. But we can't win. Women can't win being masculine. We can't beat a man who's in his masculine when we're pretending. We're not really pretending. We're pushing ourselves to be in our own masculine. Mm -hmm. We will never beat a man in his masculine. Ever. Mm -hmm. Look at Hillary Clinton. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Look at Hillary Clinton. That's right. But I think we're we're get, I think you know there's something so beautiful and so powerful when a woman is finally able to be in her femininity, and the strength of that, and and that returns us to this balance. You know, there's a balance in uh, equilibrium. equilibrium. There's this yin yang. There's a you know it's this natural giving and receiving energy. The and by the way, masculine is giving. That's right. And the feminine is receiving. That's right. Which is the opposite of what everyone teaches you. Especially, that's why women get so mad when men ask them to go get them a cup of coffee. <laughs> they don't, they don't know why, but that is why. Is that infuriating? That I mean, if you're yes. constantly, that, yeah, it's, just a <laughs> it's draining for a woman to always be in her masculine. Yeah. But if a man's not in his masculine, we will step into our masculine in a second, because it has to be filled. We can't not have the masculine. Interesting. So that's that's an important. Uh, I think that's an important thing that you brought up is that you can't not you can't just destroy the masculine no. because of what's happened with the feminine and you know masculinity is a gift. Uh, femininity is a gift. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but I, I think that's an important thing to understand because you have to have them. I have to have that balance with that. Absolutely. It has to be reciprocal. It has to mm -hmm. be that sense of give and, and receiving and balance and moving. So, uh, Jenny, you've developed a course for men. All right, guys, pay attention. <laughs> uh, it's called Provide and Protect, How to Be the Man She Craves. And it, I mean, it looks amazing. I mean, I mean, it, it is looks, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's, I believe it. I mean, the way you've, like, laid it out and has, have uh, brought it to, I mean, you've really uh, distinguished the different stages that a man needs to understand about himself. And I mean, it just looks incredible. And I think any man who, who's really wanting to learn how to be the man she craves needs to take this course. Um, and for those of you who are listening, uh, go to her website. It's www.understandwomen.net. Yes, right? yes. And it's an online course. It takes less than 20 minutes a week mm -hmm. of the content. And then you get, you get solutions that you can put in place over the next week. And then you also get man points from a man who's already taken the course. And he gives you what happened when he um, implemented it himself or what thoughts he was going through when, he, when his light bulbs went off. Uh -huh. um, that happens every week for 11 weeks. But it's, I've condensed it down for the waffle brain for 20 minutes or less a week. <laughs> That's right. You waffle brains out there, including <laughs> myself. I, I, I'm a waffle brain, too. I know, um, I know I've taken all the thoughts out. <coughs> I've, don't think because it's coming from a woman that I don't understand what the masculine needs to hear it. Yeah. Well, you were on those construction sites. Yeah. I mean, you can't get any more like uh, type A type of masculinity than right. working right there. And so, and you know, I think it's important to understand from a woman what a woman wants rather than asking a man what a woman wants. I mean, we're, a lot of us are still trying to figure it out. Right? Exactly. Um, why is it important for men to understand the difference between the masculine and feminine energy? So we're, we all have masculine and feminine energy in ourselves. And the patriarchy, patriarchal systems that we live in mm -hmm. 
pull women to the middle, if femininity is over here, masculinity is over here, we get pulled to the middle because that's what success is based on is masculine features mm -hmm. um, and drive and focus and decision making. It's all planning, all that's masculine. To, and then feminism actually made it worse. It got us in the door, mm -hmm. but we still had to make be masculine to succeed. And when you're masculine as fem as a female, most females, there's also, as I said, everyone's on a spectrum. I'm talking about the 90% of the world. There's a 10% that is very different, and they are anywhere on that scale. So don't believe that every single person is what I'm telling you. But women had to be masculine to succeed, and that totally, totally drains a woman. Then we go home from work, and we have to take care of the kids and clean the house, which is also being in our masculine. I <laughs> Most women don't either. And when I point it out, they're like, Oh my God. <laughs> and so we're in our masculine pretty much 100% of the day, unless we force ourselves to, or allow ourselves, give ourselves permission, which we usually need from an external source. Mm -hmm. Men need it from themselves. Women need it from an external source mm -hmm. um, because of the way our structures are set up. And so when women can pull out to the outside, or actually when women are in the inside, then equality comes in and it pulls men to the middle. And tells you to be more feminine and stop being sexual and which is not sexuality is both masculine and feminine it just comes differently it it puts everyone in the middle and creates this pile of mush where no one feels like themselves the men are emasculated the women are emasculated and there's no attraction left and so when there is attraction men don't know what to do with it and that creates the rape culture and the Me Too culture and all of that power and control is because nobody's given an outlet for it. But if you actually go out to your natural states, and you're going to switch all day long, but majority of your time is in your natural state, you just feel more like yourself. Men feel more like men, and women feel more like women, and then they actually like each other. And they actually want to have sex with each other. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, that's what you want, right? I mean, and that, yeah. that whole piece of the sexuality piece is so huge. The shaming of sexual uh, people, slut shaming, pervert shaming, all of that creates rape culture and the, yeah. and the power and control that needs to be there. If that goes away and we're all in our natural state, wherever it is on the scale, mm -hmm. That all stops. Thank God. We want that to stop. We want I, that absolutely. To, it's, and that, that sense of dominance and control, I think, is a deep insecurity that a man has in his own power, in his own ability oh. to, <clears throat> to, to understand uh, that uh, not, rejection from a woman doesn't necessarily mean you're not a good-looking guy. or, not, or no. what. Sometimes rejection is... Her saying yes to herself. Right. She's not saying no to you. She's saying yes to herself. That's right. And the other, and also for men, too, you know, when that happens in the other way. It's not for women. A man rejecting you is not an, against you. He's saying yes to himself. Absolutely. And so it's learning and, and respecting and moving mm -hmm. into those places so that we can get balanced. Exactly. We can be in our, in our, in our full masculine power and, and women can be in their full feminine power. Do you think that... Um, it is actually a man who can bring out the, a woman's femininity. But if he is truly in his power as a man, in all areas, that he can really evoke yes. that <laughs> femininity. Absolutely. Because yeah. she doesn't need to stand in the masculine herself. Yeah. Absolutely. It will happen in a second. And she may be resistant to some of the things at first. Mm -hmm. And that's where you men need to listen to her reactions to you. If you're in your masculine and you're um, attempting to get a woman to fall into her feminine, relax into her feminine, the points where she's resistant is where you are not filling the masculine hole. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, been, that's amazing. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And neither does she. <laughs> So it, how can a man just drive her crazy? 
And, but with his certainty, <laughs> with his clarity, with his confidence, how can how can a man do that? Yeah. So the where a lot of men fail mm -hmm. when they're uh, in a sexual relationship is what I'm talking about. When a lot of men fail by wanting a woman, letting her feel that I want you before you tell before she feels that I've got you. Uh. She needs to know that you have her, that she is safe in every way before she can surrender to you. And surrendering is feminine. Yeah. And um, unless you're in that state, she can't go there. Wow. So we've got to be in that power. We've got to be in that sense of providing that. You know, I think it's a, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it, paraphrase this terribly. <laughs> but uh, there was a, a Cherokee um, saying that says the highest, uh, purpose uh, for a man to be here is to, to protect his beloved, to protect and keep her safe walking on the earth. And uh, it was the highest uh, act or, or spiritual thing uh, for it, for a woman is to connect a man closer to his soul. Mm -hmm. And if that's that whole kind of thing, but we've got to be confident in ourselves to be able to invoke that, and that's the give and the receive. When right? you say that about the woman mm -hmm. about connect, her connecting you to your soul how does that make you feel oh, giddy. I, I am like pitter patter when you say yeah. about the um, men protecting her yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like oh. and, and I think that that's something that you know um, because the, 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 the roles and, 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 and how we, we, we navigate through relationship has, has fluctuated and changed so much it's just learning that we still have to be in that very very basic um, primal feeling yeah. that every that is universal uh, across all civilizations, all times. I mean, this is really what it was about, and yes. we we got it all perverted, we got it all distorted. Um, so understanding, Jenny, uh, a woman's emotions are inevitable, inevitable, and it's a critical thing to get <laughs> as a man. We've got to get this, and and, and uh, something I've I've certainly have had trouble with in in my relationships, and, and I've taken it too personally. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that, and so, and I've learned sometimes when she's in that uh, emotional place, don't just don't, don't act on it. Don't uh, don't get drawn into that. Just be, you know, you've got to exactly. be. You've just got to be there. So, how can men handle conflict so that it actually turns a woman on? Yeah, it's so hot when it does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so when a man can hold a woman in any of her emotional states, mm -hmm. like, oh, I mean, hold space, like, just hold us. It, we can feel it. We're very energetic. Um, we know you're not going anywhere. It's the same, it's that same analogy with the, um, lighthouse. We're smashing up against you with the waves. We need you to stand solid. Mm -hmm. Can't run away to your man cave. Which is what we do. <laughs> I don't you know. can't, we wrote our man cave. You can't tell us we're to calm down. Yeah. Don't tell us that our emotions are wrong, that we're on our period. Um, <laughs> <laughs> These are all things just, we do. Just let it happen and watch the yeah. beauty of it. It is actually really beautiful when a woman is getting her emotions out if you let it be. Mm. Just imagine watching a lightning storm from afar. Does she respect you more? If you're absolutely. able to do that, so because men crave respect, I mean, I know I do. Absolutely. So yeah. I'm going to tell a story about my son again. He was nine. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I've I I allow my my emotions to come out like I've never let them out in my life. Just in the past several years, mm -hmm. like I have a whole room that's I have punching bags and bats, and I can play really loud, angry music and cry and scream my head off. And my son will sit there and watch. And then he'll just put his arm around me on the on his on my back, uh -huh. and just sit there. He doesn't say a word. He just sits there. I feel so much more protected by my nine-year-old son than I do from 99% of the men on this planet. Wow. And all he does is sit there. He does, and I ask him how it makes him feel afterwards, and he's like, "What?" It does. He's 
he's always the thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle. <laughs> and he's just like thumbs in the middle. It's not, he's not reacting to it. He knows it's not about him, even though he may, something he did may have triggered it in me. Mm -hmm. I did, And I let it come out as soon as it's happening too. I don't wait, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which women need to learn. Yeah, that's true. But we true. can't learn yeah. it if we don't feel safe. Yeah, feel safe. You gotta feel safe. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And so you don't have to do anything. Your solution, I know men love to create the solution. Mm -hmm. The solution is to sit there and hold her. And if she's not ready to be held because she's too much energy pent up, yeah. just stand in the space with her and be solid. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. Just be solid. And you can kind of detach yourself and kind of pull yourself out of your body and, and watch it. Watch it versus feel it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's, and we so often, uh, we get caught up in it, you know, because mm -hmm. a man wants to, you know, he wants to make his money, he wants to find solutions, I'm he wants to you, get this to is that, the solution. and this is the solution. <laughs> do, don't do anything, just be there, provide space, hold that, you know, allow Tell her she's to be, beautiful when she's angry. When she's, <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, tell her she's beautiful when she's angry. Actually yeah. encourage her to get her emotions out. And I and I, I think that that's something that uh, you know because men's brains and the way we're wired, we're not when we're not aware that that's part of the process and those emotions can come over us like a tidal wave. We mm -hmm. we feel like we're drowning yeah. in all those emotions and we don't we can't breathe and so we're trying to push it back and uh, and that's when the argument starts. Yeah. And that's when Just the know that there starts. are lighthouses in the world that have been standing for over 300 years with the waves crashing against them every single day. You can do it. There you go. You can do it. I can do it. We can do it. Can do we it. can do it. We need you to do it. Please. <laughs> Please do we it. need you. We, we got to do it, guys. <laughs> Uh, just another quick radio announcement. We are uh, broadcasting live with this incredible interview with Jenny Adams uh, on KUHSDenver.com. It's KUHSDenver.com. Broadcasting uh, music and shows all throughout Colorado, across the nation, and around the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, all of you, for tuning into the council today. I uh, hope you're enjoying the show. Our show wouldn't exist without you, so thank you so much. Um, how can a man, excuse me, how can a man stay in his power? You know, I mean, that's so important because sometimes a man, if he doesn't know how to be able to set those strong boundaries around himself, he wants to make his woman happy, but sometimes he can go overboard and that can lead to problems, mm -hmm. being emotionally abused or taken advantage of or feelings of never being good enough, that I have nothing, no matter what I do, it's never enough. What are some of the things that men, because women, you want a man being in his power, right? Yeah, and being to strong. not take ours at the same time. Right. It's possible. So what can, <laughs> what can we do as men to stay in our power without taking on hers and without becoming wimps? You know, sometimes if we, we can be like just this wimpy dog and she just orders us all around. So yeah. what can we do? <laughs> it's yucky. It's yeah. yucky for everyone. Um, one of the first modules in my course mm -hmm. is your power center and learning to be in your power center and learning to be in your own pleasure, making decisions for yourself and saying no if it's uh, not a fuck yes, it's a fuck no. Right. Um, it's all about you first. Mm. You have to get right with you first. Mm. Because if you're not right with you, you can't stand in your power. And I teach you in my course where your power center is, which is here. It's not here. Mm -hmm. It is here, just a few inches below your belly button and close to your, your spine. Yeah. And I teach you how to get into that spot and stay there. And it changes the way you listen. It changes the way you are present with somebody. Yeah. It, it just changes you. And when you, you can walk into a room as a man in your power center, I teach men to have like big dragon wings on. Yeah. Every woman will turn around and be like, what energy just locked in this room? And it's about a man finding that in himself. Exactly. And you're not trying to imitate anybody else. You're not trying no. to be George Clooney. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to be Brad Pitt. You're not trying to be whoever. It's you're, you. It's, it's all individual. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, are we, and you know, I've done this where you're like, oh, she likes that guy, so I'm going to try to be like that guy. 
die, and then you be then you're gonna like pretend to be somebody you're not, then that's yeah. terrible. And it's yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're an apple, be an apple. Don't an try to be a banana. Apple. <laughs> That's right. Be your organic apple. Be your own organic apple. That's it. It'd be the best organic apple you possibly can be. Mm -hmm. um, what about when somebody like you're, you uh, uh, you meet, and I know this uh, this happens to a lot of guys, where you, you find a woman that you're attracted to, and all of a sudden you feel that heart beating, and your throat gets all knotty, and your tongue gets like dry. I love hearing talk. that men go through this, because uh, women just don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, I, I'm pretty much an open book on the show. So. And I love, I get to hear this stuff all the time, but yeah. women don't, so I'm glad that you're putting it out there in the world. Oh, well, yeah, it, it happens, and you don't know what to say, and you're like, <laughs> what can a man do to, like, calm himself down and say, all right, it's, uh, you, you can get the words out. You know what I used to say is just, just, just say a few sentences, just, you know, <laughs> get a few sentences out, ask her out for coffee, whatever you got to do, and, right. and we'll get through. Once you can learn to be in your power center yeah. and have your dragon wings on, yeah. You can talk to anyone yeah. about anything. Fair point. And never, I think, is a really important part, is when we never bow or impress a person out of fear of uh, of being rejected right. or being... We can uh, smell it. We're like a dog. We can smell that a mile away. You can smell that. <laughs> Remember he said women's senses are... Over a man's. <laughs> Super high. Guys, we can't even compete. There's just just accept it. It's, uh, so you really have the first thing you have to do is figure yourself out. A lot of men come to me who are married and they're like, "Please save my marriage," and I'm like, "We're gonna save you first, yeah. and then you can decide if you want to save your marriage." Right. Because right. you might be a different person by the end of this, and you may not want to save your marriage. Yeah. That's true. You may not match what you want. That's why you're not the person you want to be. Yeah. It's because you're not in the right place. Until you find you, you don't know that. Mm. And that's a tough lesson. That's a hard lesson for both men and women mm -hmm. to be able to get that. Because you, know, you can be invested in time into a relationship with somebody. And if you're not in that power and you see, I think that uh, whenever there's drama, there's always deceit. There's mm -hmm. always deceit. We're not, whether it's us being dece Deceitful deceiving ourselves, ourselves yeah. and deceiving ourselves, and then you're deceiving somebody else, mm -hmm. or that other person is, you know, being deceptive. Right. And so there's always that kind of dynamic going on. And we really need to take that time to really get, all right, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is who I want to be. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm carrying out into the world. And then if this is the right person, you know, if not, then we've got to move to a different direction. And but. then the next piece is to be courageous and do something scary every day. Something uh -huh. that scares you every single day. Because if you don't and you stay in your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you're staying in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. I've had men call me and say, can you work with my wife so that she wants to have more sex? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do it for my wife. Don't work on me. Do it for my Because yeah, right. it's her. It's, she doesn't want sex. It's her. Right. Mm. It's not her. It, it is, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's that she doesn't feel safe. Mm. She's been taught to not feel safe through society and through her upbringing, and then you're not giving it to her. You're not giving her the safety she needs. Oh, wow. Well, wow, wow, wow. Mm. Man, what an amazing question you have. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, how can men get their needs met in a relationship while still being able to give her what she wants? When a man gives a woman what she needs, mm -hmm. she automatically gives you back what you need. Right. So, um, if a man is really good in the bedroom, their relationship may just spin around at this level here. Mm -hmm. But if he has issues outside the bedroom, it's going to go down. It's going to spiral down. It's a vicious cycle. And the opposite is true, too. If he's good outside the bedroom, but not good inside the bedroom, it's a cycle down, mm -hmm. vicious cycle. If they're both good, remember the spaghetti brain, if they're both good, it's a virtuous cycle and spins up. Mm -hmm. Well, I, like, I definitely like the virtuous cycle that spins up. I think that's, <laughs> that's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, we were talking about the bedroom. And let's go, about, you know, what are some of the things outside the bedroom that can really help inside the bedroom? 
bedroom's not just the bedroom. Uh -huh. The bedroom uh -huh. is all day. It's all, all day. day foreplay. All day foreplay, guys. It's not just what happens in the bedroom, right? Yeah, give her a hard kiss in the morning when you leave for work. Pull her close to you. Let her know she's wanted, that yeah. she's safe, that you've got her, but that not every interaction like that leads to sex right now. Uh, I see. Mm, you have to build anticipation in her. Create her to want you. You did this when you were dating. It's true. You did this when you met her. It's true. And that is true. And little notes. You can leave, leave, leave little notes. Leave notes and text there. messages. Mm -hmm. Not about groceries. <laughs> That's always part of it. If you go to the grocery <laughs> store and, go and get pick up some groceries, that's not yeah, that's not very uh, sexy. That's not sexy. Mm -hmm. That's not going to turn her on. No. Well, that's important, you know. And uh, I think it's we forget that uh, you know the romance to keep that romance going. You've got to do a little bit of everything, and that's what keeps the magic. That's mm -hmm. what keeps the excitement. And you know, I I certainly have been. Of guilty of that, of not doing enough. And, 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 I have to. You know, so we're <laughs> learning and then just trying to understand better. And Because you want to be able, to, I think we all want to have that where, you know, uh, we have that incredibly dynamic and, and powerful relationship where we can be in each other's presence mm -hmm. and just looking across the way and you look over there and you're like, you know, that's my, that's my girl and that's my yeah. guy and, you know, and you just... How about that's my woman? Or that's my woman. That feels way that's hotter. That's so much hotter. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's my woman right there. That's much better. Yep. And then just hold her with your eyes. Yeah. So she knows you have her. Mm. And that's that thing about making them feel special, mm -hmm. important, and safe. And safe. And, and safe. seen. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What can a man do to make her feel safe? I mean, you know, in her presence, you know, you talked about the lighthouse thing, and that's a great metaphor for people to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Is it those kinds of looks of being able to see her in a crowd yeah. and picking her out and not looking at anyone else? Mm -hmm. Is it, what, what are other things that a, a man can do to make her feel safe? So one thing they teach in Tantra mm -hmm. is for the man to have his eyes on her eyes the whole time. And to hold her and make sure she knows that if she opens her eyes, that he's going to be there. Oh. That's cool. It is cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. And just focus on her eyes and, and pleasure at the same time. But yeah. whatever is happening, she knows that if she comes back out of her ecstasy, that she'll know that you're still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think every man... Uh, I can't say every man. I think majority of men really want to do that. You know, they really want to have that. Sort of, I agree. Uh, I, every, I, there hasn't been a man I've met that doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. That's a straight man. Mm -hmm. And there's not a woman I've met that doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. Just these subtle things. It's <laughs> so important. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. What do you think, you know, what are some of the foundational basic things? We're almost done with our with the show here, folks, but I want to get a couple more questions in here before we close out. Um, you know, based on my experiences in relationships, uh, trust is important, communication is important, fidelity is important, honesty is important, chemistry, you got to have chemistry, you know, and that's important. You can't deny that. And oftentimes, you know, and I work with people in these, you know, I teach these classes, and a lot of times there's a lot of, you know, infidelity going on, cheating in the trail going on. Someone's not feeling good enough in the relationship. Someone's not feeling safe in the relationship. Or, or, or they're really polyamorous. Or they're polyamorous. They could and be they're afraid to say it. Yeah, and they could be polyamorous. Uh, can trust ever be regained between those kinds of indi between individuals? Uh, and what would they need to do? What advice would you give men and women going through that? Sure. So I've been uh, in a relationship where someone um, had a relationship outside of our relationship yeah. that I wasn't aware of for many years, and you know it was very hurtful. But it the way I got healed is to have a conversation with him about why. Mm -hmm. What was happening back then? What wasn't he getting? What wasn't I doing? Mm -hmm. So that I knew what to do differently. When you don't know what caused it, mm -hmm. 
you can't fix it. Yeah. And so a lot of people just break up and they never talk about it and then they don't they can't heal from it. Yeah. Neither That's one. Yeah. Um, that relationship it didn't end up working because of other reasons, but I healed from that mm -hmm. because we had that conversation and it was the most horrible conversation I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult. I forced him to do it. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. Guys don't want to do it. We I didn't want, yeah, and I didn't want to do it either. Yeah. Yeah. But I did. And and it's then, uncomfortable territory. It was and it's horrible, painful territory. But yeah. it is way easier afterwards. Yeah. yeah. It's there's a liberation, I think, that if you can get to that kind of a conversation with someone and when you're ready, both of you have to be ready for that kind no. of conversation. You don't think so? You can't wait till you're ready because you'll never be ready. Oh, uh, well, never, ever, ever. But if ever, you're ever always be yelling, ready. if if you get into an <laughs> argument, if you're going to yell and like that, um, I think I, you have to get to a the point. The way we ended up doing it is yeah. he wrote it down uh, and then let me read it. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Because then we didn't have to have that argument, and he could think about how he was going to say it so that it wasn't blaming me. Right. Right. Because I didn't. There were things about our relationship that needed to improve, but it wasn't my choice for him to go do that. Got it. There you go. Thank you. My gosh. I want to just get a couple of, how can we lessen uh, the effects as men, the resentments that build up in relationships? Because that's a huge thing. Because those accumulations of things, you know, you, uh, a man will, will let something go by, but he'll feel resentful or something goes, you know, and all of a sudden something happens and it triggers and he, he, blows up or he gets upset and then you're in a very toxic situation all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. How can men lessen the effects of those built up resentments? In himself? In himself, yeah. That's a different flip on it because I usually teach about how to help the, the woman. <laughs> oh, well, how to help the woman? Because she's teacher. got a lot because she has that spaghetti brain. Right, well, that's so it. one resentment over here, Yeah. even though you're talking about something over here, it's going to pull on that spaghetti right. and it's really buttery. Slippery. <laughs> it's very slippery going down that spaghetti braid. <laughs> we just have to do that. Yeah. And men can more turn it off and put it in a different waffle yeah. section. Yeah. Um, women can't do that. And there might be, and since everything's connected for a woman, all those resentments are tied together and there may be multiple ones. And so the best way is for a man to help a woman with all those resentments, because there's some built up that you didn't you weren't around for, they're just still there from her past. When you pull on that spaghetti string, <laughs> um, is to first know that they exist mm -hmm. and be aware that they exist um, and work with her, work on yourself in all the aspects. You can't just look at one waffle section. You have to look at all of them to improve yourself mm -hmm. so that she's not resenting. She doesn't trust you in this waffle section. She has to trust for her is all of it together. And that takes time to get out to yeah, understand. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I mean, because it's, you can't just do it overnight and do no. it like that. I guess you know, it's when those things come up that you start exactly. to go, all right, let's take a look at But that. when you're solid in yourself in that lighthouse yeah. and we can feel that, that's the first place to start. And so it really begins being solid, having, being, owning your own power. Yes. As a man, uh -huh. really owning your own power and kind of getting grounded in that, solid in that, mm -hmm. and then and own your own sexuality and, too. Yeah, and own your own sexuality. You know, that's it. It's we, okay. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give us? I mean, this is amazing. Please, folks, go to her website. It's www. Uh, understand. Understand women. <laughs> I know exactly what we're talking about the whole time. Understand. <laughs> Understandwomen.net. <laughs> um, uh, and go. And guys, this is fantastic. You're going to learn so much by doing this. It's going to help to bring uh, balance uh, in society and culture and help men to have and women to have the best relationships they possibly can because none of us knew this when we were growing up. Exactly. We didn't understand this, you know. And, and women don't still, men don't, women still don't, but women of the world need men now of all times in our life now is the time when you can feel that boiling mm -hmm. we can't have you run away you cannot you're part of the solution and that's a good feeling actually and i think men need to hear that that we are part of the solution that we're not you know going to pay for the sins of our fathers and, and all that. we didn't cause it 
We didn't cause all the things that happened, you know, uh, 2,000 years ago, or mm -hmm. 3,000, 5,000 years ago. We, we are at the effects of it as well. Exactly. And so we need so, your help to put the solutions in place because we can't do it on our own. Right. And you don't want us to lose our masculinity. We want you, you to want, gain it. You want to gain the masculinity. Yes. Gentle and strong. Yes. Right? Firm and grounded. Uh, Jenny, before we close out the show today, could you give one piece of advice? I ask all my guests this. Uh, one bit of advice, one bit of wisdom from your life experience. Uh, what would you? What would it be to for all those who are listening right now? The biggest thing that helped me in the very beginning of my transformation was realizing that happiness is a choice. I choose if I'm happy, which makes me make better choices. Is this choice making me happy, or is this choice making someone else happy? Mm -hmm. There was a moment in my life where I was like, okay, I, I either have to choose happiness or I have to choose the insane asylum. It was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so I cho chose happiness and I was determined not to go backwards. And that's part of how I learned what I've done. And I just kept looking, what makes me happy? What makes me happy? And keep going. And each time I made a leap and took the courage to actually step outside the shoulds, mm -hmm. stop shooting upon myself. <laughs> we should have bought ourselves all the time. <laughs> um, and allowed myself to make my own choices, mm -hmm. to make me happy. That's all that matters. My kids are happier because I'm happy. Men around me are happier because I'm happy. I chose that. They didn't create it. I chose it. Are you still on? We're just about closing up right now. Okay. And we're uh, we've got uh, we're for just a couple more minutes here, and All you do is hit that left button. That's it, and okay. that pop up. Okay, uh, when you're ready. Okay, and uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now we got a little. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, thank you, Jenny, for being on the show today. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, thank uh, you for having me. It was uh, such I a appreciate treat. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Well, thank you. And, and I, I value and cherish everything that you had to share with today mm -hmm. and being uh, so honest uh, with this audience about, uh, you know, these are these are real issues and, and they're real important. And I appreciate all the men out there listening to the end because yeah. I know some of this wasn't not easy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, and uh, folks, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. This show wouldn't be possible without you. Uh, the Council is uh, a show that opens up for all peoples from all walks of life to be able to learn, to grow, to understand, to appreciate, to value, to hear, so that we can grow uh, as a culture, as a society, and to become better, healthier, wiser. And uh, two weeks from today, we're going to have another wonderful guest. Uh, she, we're going to talk about uh, the opioid epidemic that's going on in this country, and she set up an incredible foundation to help mothers uh, of children who are going through that. And uh, so we'll be looking forward to talking with Dina Hart. And uh, thank you folks so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back on in two weeks. Uh, and I hope you'll all be here with us. Uh, thank you so much. The council is adjourned. May you all be well. May you all be free of pain and suffering. May you all be whole. God bless. W-H-O-L-E. <laughs> and and go to her website www.understandwomen.net. Correct. All right. All right, folks. Thank you. Thank you.